Hello, my name is Andreas Philipp and I am a business developer in the IoT department of KeyFactor. Today I want to show you how to use Science Server to implement code signing in the ESP32 toolchain. Within this tutorial I will start with the overall concept of secure boot within the ESP32 microcontroller and how code signing could be integrated into the build process overall. After that I will show you how to use sign server and import an existing signing token into the sign server to use it for code signing. And last but not least I will show you how to generate the code signature of the sign server for the ESP32 firmware and load it or upload it, it into an ESP32 environment. In this tutorial I will use a sign server that is based on the sign server community edition Docker container and the tokens that are issued, uh, I'm using EGBC ACE Docker container. You, find, you will find all the video tutorials in our YouTube channel uh, about how to set up an EGBC A Docker container, uh, how to set up the sign service CE Docker container, and if you want to see how to configure and how to uh, implement the certificate profile and an ent entity profile for a plain signer and the signer. Uh, token itself in the EJBCA, please have a look at the container signing the sign server uh, video tutorial. For this tutorial, I assume that you are familiar with the ESP32 development environment and that you have an up and running EDF IDF framework um, on your computer that you can use. I recommend to you to go through the secure boot description that you will find in the Getting Started Guide of the ESP32 to understand and to you know, understand the overall concept of ESP32 and to prepare an ESP32 you know, for code signing capabilities. Okay, let's have a deeper look into the ESP32. The microcontroller is very popular in the IoT space because it comes with a solid power computing power. It has built-in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, different kind of memory types, including an eFuse, and of course, he has a built-in security concept that is the basic for enabling secure boot and flash encryption, plus. A crypto acceleration unit um, for RES, hash algorithm, uh, signing algorithms, and random number generator. Espressive is providing a development framework it called IDF framework, and that is the basic for developing application, but also it is it provides tools for generating bootloaders and um, for you know, configuring the boot process and the build environment itself. To understand the ESP32 secure boot concept, let's have a deeper look into the boot process itself. The microcontroller has a three-stage boot process implemented. The first stage bootloader is booting up the second stage bootloader, second stage bootloader is booting up the application. So after enabling secure boot process, in the first step, the first stage bootloader is verifying the digest that is calculated over the second bootloader by using a symmetric key that is burned into the eViews in block 2. The symmetry key is a 256-bit IS key that is stored in the eFuse block 2. 
To calculate the digest over the second stage bootloader, we need also the public key from the code signing key pair that we upfront generated. Adding this public key, we can calculate the digest over the second stage bootloader by calculating a MAC with the given IES key over the bootloader plus the public key and add this digest to the bootloader itself. The application that we are developing and that we are building yeah, is signed during the build process with the secret key you know, of the co-signing key pair and the signature is added to the application. While the boot process, the second stage bootloader, is then verifying with this public key the signature of the application. This is the overall boot process when the secure boot option is enabled in the ESP32. Okay, let's jump right in our in our signed server Docker environment. The first step that we have to do is to copy our pre-generated ESP12 token into the signed server Docker environment. Therefore, we have to grab the container ID and with the container ID we are able to copy the PTL file into the sign server docker environment. Now we can fire up our admin web for our sign server. First step is we are adding a new crypto worker and uh, we are selecting from the template the key store crypto template and due to the fact that we want to reference to a P12 token you have to change the token pass to point to our ESP signer P12 file. Press apply and then we can activate the token by entering the enrollment code. Okay, now we have generated a crypto token based on our existing P12 file. We yeah, open up the token, going into the crypto token environment, clicking on the details of the token itself. And we are copying the alias yeah, because later on when we are generating, because we need this alias for the signing worker that we are now generating. So for the signing worker we are choosing from our template the plain signer template and within the properties we are going we are going through the crypto token section and due to the fact that we are using the default name the crypto token p12 it doesn't have to change anything on that but um, for the key itself, we are not using the signer 3 key. Here we have to enter our copied aliases. And we apply, and then the plain signer is active. Okay, now we have a proper configured sign server environment. And our sign server is ready to re receive requests for signing application. Now we have to switch into the expressive development framework for our ESP32. We are using the provided IDF framework and the first step is that we have to configure our build environment. Therefore we are launching the configuration tool that is providing by the IDF framework and we are jumping right into the security features. We are enabling the hardware secure boot option 
and we are disabling signing binary string build. This, is, this option is per default enabled and it will use for signing your binary files a locally stored private key. And that is what we don't want. So we disable this function. We are saving it into our configuration file. We are jumping back into the main menu and then we are going into the partition table and we are editing the offset from 8000 to 10000 because due to the fact that we are using secure boot we have to enter a space for our digest that we are calculating for the second stage bootloader and that's the reason why we are changing the offset. Storing this option in the config file, quitting is and now We can try to flash and start, flash our application and monitor our controller. Okay, once the build is done, we are uploading our application into the expressive environment and the boot fails due to the fact that the ESP32 tried to verify the image and he stated that it was, that he received an invalid signature version and uh, so the secure boot signature verification failed and he stopped it. That's clear because we disabled the sign binaries in our configuration file and we uploaded an unsigned application and a signature cannot be verified. So now we have to integrate the signing functionality with our sign server into the build process of the ESP32. Okay. To integrate the sign server into the build process of the ESP32 uh, application, we wrote a small Python script that you can that you will find in our doc section um, of the this, this tutorial. So within this script, um, so first of all, we are picking up the unsigned binary file that we are generated um, in our IDF framework. We are sending it to our sign server um, so with a proper configuration and receiving the signature and adding the signature to the existing unsigned binary file and storing it into the built environment of the IDF framework. So once we are doing it um, so we are receiving a proper signed uh, binary file that is stored now in our ESP32 development environment. Okay, now we can jump back to, into our IDF framework and we can do the same what we did before by flashing the now signed application file into the ESP32 and firing up the monitor to see what happened. And so he's connecting to the controller, uploading the environment, and then we are connecting and then we can see that now our core application with the Hello World is starting up um, and it's valid. Uh, and we, when we are looking into what happened in the boot process itself, here the boot processor is verifying the image signature, then he's loading the application, um, so that means also the signature was okay, uh, and this is the proper integration of code signing functionality. So let's recap what we did. So first of all, we configured the sign server in our Dogger environment and we imported a pre-generated signer token and a P12 format into the sign server. 
Next, we generated an ESP plane application binary file in the IDF development framework. With our Python script, we are sending the binary image to the sign server, which generates the hash value and the signature. We are adding the signature to the application image. And last, we are uploaded the image to the prepared ESP32 with a bootloader holding the public key. You find the tutorial of this application scenario in our documentation section at doc.primekey.com. If you are interested in more tutorial videos about our Key Factor community products, please go to our YouTube channel or visit our uh, GitHub section. Thank you for watching this tutorial today.